Okay, so now that we've talked about Schnorr and the fantastic primitives that we can build on top of it, um, I'd like to come and introduce you guys to Taproot. So in essence, Taproot introduces us to a couple new things. Um, for one, it provides different ways of spending an output. So we have a default spending path, which is basically a single or multi-party public key. Uh, this public key uh, can be aggregated in a multi-party case or just a single, uh, have a single owner, but these two are indistinguishable from an on-chain perspective, so that's a huge privacy win. Taproot also provides us with alternative spending paths. These alternative spending paths have, alter have hidden scripts, so we can encode these locking conditions with Bitcoin script, um, but they are not revealed unless we spend, uh, spend these explicitly. Now, Taproot makes a lot of sense, especially for multi-party contracts. Um, you can consider the default spending path, um, in this case, as we said before, it's just an aggregated public key. And the default spending path um, is done collaboratively with all parties, and it allows us to hide the actual multi-party contract that's hidden in the alternative spending paths. If we have a closer look at the alternative spending paths, um, these, in aggregate, um, encode the multi-party contract that, um, that all uh, participants agree to. Uh, you can consider the individual scripts that we commit to a taproot output, uh, to have a have a have a have an or condition, so we can have multiple um, individual scripts, which are all alternative spending script paths. So this is very nice. Um, so in the following sections, um, I like to go over how this is actually encoded into a taproot output. We talked about the de default spending paths that is represented by the taproot public key, and we talked about alternative spending paths, which are script spending paths, uh, which are then committed into this taproot output. 